We grew up with the monarch butterflies, magical, bright, orange and black creatures, whimsically fluttering in the wind, dancing from place to place. They held a special place in our hearts because they brought with them an impossible story of transformation. I think my first experience with the monarch butterflies when I was really young. Um, in my family, our whole family is a Mexican culture. They actually arrive in the overwintering spot a couple days right before the Day of the Dead. And a lot of people actually believe that all those monarchs coming back are the souls of their relatives and past family members coming to revisit. Monarchs are, I think everybody loves them. You know, you, people see them, you just stop and you look at it and go, wow, you know, that's a pretty cool looking butterfly. Every time I, I, I see a monarch fluttering around up there, I stop and I just watch it. Yeah, I just go, this is a really cool insect. It starts as an egg, and then that egg hatches into a larva, which we call a caterpillar. And then that caterpillar goes through several stages of molting to get bigger and bigger. And really, a caterpillar is just a mouth with a bag on it. Its only job is to eat. And then once they finish eating and get to a certain size, then they turn into a pupa. And so then that pupa um, is where this major transformation occurs, where it goes from this caterpillar form to the adult form. So you can even see the wings developing underneath that, that pupal skin. And then out from that emerges the butterfly. At the very beginning, it's very soft, and then it has to extend its wings and let them harden and dry in that position until they can fly off. From an ooey gooey caterpillar to a beautiful, one of a kind flying creature. Come spring, they were everywhere here on the central coast of California a migration from Oregon to California. Impromptu visitors in our Marin County backyards, parks, and gardens. Dotting milkweed plants. Gathering by the hundreds of thousands a short distance away in the Pacific Grove. As children, we saw them for the beauty and wonder they brought to our lives. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out and... He was a beautiful butterfly. But separate from creating this childhood nostalgia, these one-of-a-kind creatures had an important job to do. They were pollinators. And a threat to the monarchs is a threat to us all. No butterflies, no food, no humans. So what would a world without butterflies and other pollinators look like? Well, we wouldn't survive. Humans have neglected the earth, diminishing our only natural resources, and selfishly created products for further damage. Know what you're gonna get? <laughs> Introducing Raid Multibug. Multibug kills all the bugs that bug you. Raid! At this point, we're at about 95% decline. It's only about 5% of what we've seen in the past. You know, the monarch butterflies and butterflies in general are, are being threatened by climate change and by this environmental degradation that we're seeing as a result uh, of rising carbon emissions. So just any kind of changes, whether that is deforestation or um, changes in the environment can make a big difference. The, the, the monarchs that live west of the Rocky Mountains, you know, they migrate to the California coast. The problem is that the overwintering sites are not fixed. So two thirds of our food supply is pollinated by insects. We eat how many times a day? Three times a day. Um, we eat every single day of the year for our entire lives. And our food, you know, what we're eating every day on our plate, that would not be possible without pollinators, without butterflies. So they're a part of a food web. And it's not just a food chain. It's not that it goes in one direction or two directions. It goes in many directions. So there's all kinds of different interactions going on between herbivores and predators and top predators. And to remove one species from that web, no big problem. So imagine a, a fishing net. You know, you get one little hole in it. Okay, you may lose a fish now and again. You get a couple of big holes in that, in that fishing net and more fish get through it. It's the way the ecosystem is going right now is without being able to uh, keep all of those connections going, we're just 
creating a fishing net that has no net. It's- we have something that works. We have nature at its you know best. So why would we try um, to recreate something that's already working? The reality is we're we're all dependent upon one another in, in in one way or another, and oftentimes we don't realize it until that dependency is broken. It is something we can do here in Marin, in your yard, at your school garden, whatever. Get some flowers in there. Planting bright, flat petal flowers attracts monarchs to pollinate. They're so little and they seem so small, but they really have this big impact. And I think you can use that same uh, kind of lens to look at individual actions, how they might seem small at first, but over time they start to really accumulate and have this big impact. Planting native plants, uh, especially the milkweed plant, which is their plant. Um, they need it to like lay their eggs on so they can make generation after generation. I definitely think educating others is like a great way to start, you know, telling a kid like, hey, did you know this plant like saves butterflies? I don't know. We have something important to add to this conversation, not only around climate change, but around other social justice issues that you are passionate about. Oftentimes, the hardest part is just deciding to speak up, deciding to take action. And once you go from there, you can start changing the world. We have to take responsibility in our day-to-day -day lives about what we buy, why we buy it, how much we travel, and all those sort of things. And um, you know, we, we can make a difference. I think there is a hopeful future. But people need to be aware, not just of the problems, but of their role in the problem. What should we say to people? Well, I already made a sign. You made a sign? What did your sign say? Um, my arms are in danger. Butterfly, baby, I still have my doubts about you, cause butterfly.